For a very, very long time, this unit over here, Catherine, has been hyped up so insanely. And honestly, with good reason too, there is very little that she actually can't do. And so with this announcement over here, we will probably be getting Catherine in the next few days. And so my guys, welcome to probably the most overhyped character in the game. But to be honest, with very, very good reason. Hi. Welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about a couple of different updates, but ultimately we're going to be spending the majority of our time on Catherine. I'm just going to talk through quickly a couple of these new characters as well as some updates from the developers themselves and then move over to Catherine and talk about the team comps she comes into as well as why she is as well loved as she is. And so with that being said, let's get through some of these developer notes as well as the other characters that have been released. Starting off with a new optimization of the tasks in the new Dream Maelstrom. So number one over here, you guys can see, I'm not going to read it again, Dream Maelstrom was our battle pass that included the Ella. And so the optimization of the tasks in the new Dream Maelstrom is very much going to be like the removal of uh, level up your Miku by five levels. I think generally speaking, they're going to be going with like some tasks that you can, that belong to like your end game loop. Like there are some tasks which are like, oh, run the mana dreamland or like run the skill stage. And we certainly do stuff like that in your end game loop. However, things like uh, level up your set test by five, leveling up like your Pakane, leveling up pretty much all of your other R or SR units by five, it's, it kind of feels like you're going out of your way to having to fulfill that task. And so that is probably what this one is going to be about. They're going to remove those ones and then add some more tasks in that are more relevant to us in end game. All right. And so as for number two, new support system for developing your dolls, essentially they are working on a system that is going to help us make the doll development experience a lot better. However, it is going to take a while before it actually comes live. So I think for this one, it's more of a stay tuned. Don't expect too much right now. And so moving on to the last one, new event for Spring Festival and Valentine's Day. It just sounds like we have new events coming up, probably new login events, and then of course very much our new stages, which is gonna be pretty freaking sick. But otherwise, that's the extent of these developer notes. And so let me move on to the next topic of the day, which is going to be Shur over here. Now, Shur is a pretty sick unit, especially when she was released, she was used for a whole bunch of different things. She is very much a red healer, brimstone healer, if I am not wrong over here, you can see Shur. And so whilst Shur herself is not bad, the unfortunate unfortunate reality is that like Tornell exists. In a nutshell, Tornell, especially with her charge system as well as the chaos energy generation, she is going to fit into virtually every single team and that is what we're actually going to see with the Catherine that is going to come out very very soon. Combined with the fact that Catherine has just been announced, rolling for sure is not exactly the greatest idea. However, again, like the content in this game isn't like overly excessively hard and so if you do like Sher, if you do like her looks, her vibe, then freaking go for it my dudes but otherwise yeah the nice thing about this is that this is the awakening summon and so if you did dump in some pulls for sure but didn't get her or something it is going to actually contribute to your Catherine pulls which is coming up next all right and so after that we have this one over here Dathaos who is like I think our second male unit in the game after such a freaking long period of time since launch right so he is going to be an SSR as you can see down here mage in the mercury element and so unfortunately that's already a tough field to be in right like you're already competing against like your new Flora. You're competing against your AOE mages in Ushpia as well as Maya. And then you're potentially competing against Cersei as well as some of the other compellers. And on top of all of that, you are competing against the goddess Mnir, the single target goddess. And so whilst he is pretty cool, and you're probably going to get him, especially because he is probably going to be on the Catherine banner, it is quite hard to recommend actually investing into this character, especially with that bloated pool. All right, and so with that being said, let's move on to Dana over here who is probably like, this is quite possibly one of my favorite designs in the game. She kind of looks like a demi dragon, like she's got those horns coming out and it's very much like a summoner feel. This is this is quite possibly one of my favorite arts in the game right now. However, again, Dana is gonna be another mage in the Mercury element. And for the same reasons as before, it's very, very hard to recommend her. And just talking through this one really quick, of course, like there are different scenarios for different people. For example, like your Pakane is very, very good for the CC, for the freeze. We've got Ashpiel with the one second stun. We've got Maya with the heal as well as a defense down. Like to really impress in the realm of the mage in Mercury element, like you're gonna have to beat something like that. And so yeah, with that being said, let's move on to our star of today, 
Catherine. So for you guys who don't know, Catherine is a guardian in the brimstone element. That is the red one. And before we go anywhere, let me do a quick evaluation and description of her skills because like even just showing you guys what she does, you guys are already going to quickly figure out why she is so busted. So starting off with her S1, aka her order skill, she is going to have self-immune to five physical attacks. And on top of that, depending on her skill level, she is going to get physical defense and magic defense increased and scaling on her maximum HP, which which is pretty insane considering she is already a tank. And then on top of that, for 10 seconds, she is going to have the damage redirection, so her taunt, and then also restore HP based on her physical defense per second. Now, the real insane kicker about this skill is the fact that it is on a charge system, a four charge system. And so for you guys who have like the Amanami, the Tornell, and some of the other charge units, I think Caledonia is another one, you guys will have instantly picked up on this and realized why she is so freaking insane. The fact that this skill has has value without you having to actually consume any order or chaos points for it is just like mind blowing. To get all of this essentially passively is like Wow. So moving on to skill two over here, generate shields to all allies by X amount, scaling on her physical defense. So as you guys can see, there is a lot of stuff about physical defense. And so similarly to how you want to build magic defense for your Aphelin, you want to actually be building physical defense for your Catherine on the other side. All right, but coming back to this one, so she gives a shield to everyone based on her physical defense and then also gives them gift of glory. And so what gift of glory does is for every five damages inflicted, deal an additional X amount of damage scaling again on physical damage to not only deal attack to all enemies but also to stun them for 0.5 seconds but that's not it my guys we go even further we also get to reduce the enemy's physical defense by 60 percent of her physical defense okay so let me literally count all of the different mechanics that she has she has a self immune to five attacks she has increases to physical defense and magic defense based on max hp on top of that she has the taunt in which she redirects all damage to herself and then can also heal based on her physical defense again. All of this is wrapped up in a charge system, meaning that it is technically passive. And then on the other side of it, you are also generating shields to all of your allies and then giving them the gift of glory, which lasts 10 seconds. And this gift of glory, it does AOE physical damage. It stuns them for 0.5 seconds. And then it also reduces the enemy's physical defense. And guys, I don't know if you did notice or not, but we did not even get to the passive. After using a skill, the enemy's damage takes is increased by 15 to 30 percent for 10 seconds that is like literally the definition of an overloaded kit it's not even just overloaded it is essentially a nuclear bomb and so if you guys have been here for a while you'll remember how like for the start of the game people were like oh man you can't live without Aflin," or like perhaps you can't live without Tornell you can't live without Aflin. that statement is no longer true and as for Tornell it kind of is still holding true but now this is it like Catherine is kind of the new mega mega meta you need her like you really really do need this unit right here and so with all of this information in mind and combined with the fact that she is a guardian in the brimstone element let's talk quickly about the units that she would really like synergize with like the teams that you really want to build around her so coming back over here we have got a whole bunch of different units that certainly look like potential candidates to form a team with her most people would actually say caledonia akasha or selenia and Catherine. So with this team, you've got actually two guardians, but you have two guardians that both have heals. And then you've also got the damage coming out from Akasha or Selenia, depending on which one you have or picked. Akasha and Selenia can be replaced by any of your assassins, but the important thing is that they are assassins, right? The one cost order skill is going to really, really trigger off this S1 over here. So again, to reiterate, Caledonia, Catherine, and Akasha or Selenia. That's kind of like your first traditional option. It's very very, very defensive is running two guardians. But the other comp that I would recommend, and I would probably recommend more, is taking your Catherine, Tornell, and Akasha or Selenia. Purely because Tornell is replacing the Caledonia's charge system with one of her own. But the thing about Tornell is that she is always going to be relevant because of this skill over here where she can just generate this chaos energy like bam, bam, oh, 
Oh, there, there's another one. It's honestly insane. Like the chaos energy from that, as well as this night wish, which is on a charge system. She is just giving them the fat juice, right? Like let's have a look at level five. She's giving 40% of an increase to doll's attacks as well as healing them. And then on top of that, she is going to be boosting the damage dealt by 15%. This kit is like more than enough to actually just straight up replace anybody with Tornell. It definitely takes priority over like that 10 or 15% to all stats or whatever. Like this this is just so insanely cracked. And so to summarize, in my opinion, the best in slot team would probably be Catherine, Tornell, and Selenia or Akasha. I personally like Selenia more, especially because I have a Christmas skin. <laughs> uh, yeah. But certain future content makes sure that both Selenia and Akasha are quite competitive, so just stay tuned. Otherwise, that pretty much captures like all of my thoughts about Catherine over here, and hopefully you guys will understand how to build her, as well as the team around her, right? And so again, if you don't have the Selenia or the Akasha, literally any other assassin with a one cost order skill. And then if you don't have like Tornell, Sher, Caledonia, you can use some other units such as uh, Norn. I think for me, Norn is the most obvious character, as you can see, healer in the Brimstone element. But otherwise, if you're really down bad, you could run the Cross, you could run the Ruda, you could run Primula, but like, to be honest, you should be running either Caledonia, Sher, Tornell. Pretty sure like everybody has Tornell now. And so to be honest, that's kind of it. And so I really do want to ask this secret question because of how hyped up Catherine has been. It's time to tell me, my guys. How much did you save up for this unit over here, Catherine? Have you managed to save up a full pity of like 180 pulls? Or are you down bad because you saw Sir Severe and you're like, oh, I need that. That was me, by the way. That was uh, that was certainly me. And so my guys, let me know how many gemmies you have, how many pulls you have saved up for Catherine down below. And if you guys end up doing so, then I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did find this video helpful, then please consider a like. And if you did want to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as Catherine the Miracle, wow, that is actually such an appropriate nickname. Catherine the Miracle once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.